everyone. I hope you're doing really well. It is January. It's been a while, but I'm finally back to share some knitting updates with you, some favorite things, some shop news. I've gathered a whole bunch of stuff. It's spread out everywhere and I'm super excited to share some of it with you today. Feels like it's been a really long time. I ended up taking a week or two off at the beginning of January, which was really nice, very much needed. And I've been slowly easing into all of the things this month. And as much as I love that first week of January for a fresh new start, I am not a huge fan of January. It's probably my least favorite month. It's usually gray and gloomy, and it is definitely that this year but I also feel like it's a little bit of a letdown after a really exciting month. December is just filled with holiday excitement, family, small gatherings, good food, even the excitement of filming and uploading every day for Vlogmas shakes up my routines. And when everything kind of dies down in January, it's nice, but it's also a little bit hard for me to jump back into things. It's a bit of a struggle. So I've taken some time off, but I've also been slowly easing into new routines again, plans for my shop this year, um, knitting dreams, all kinds of stuff I've been thinking about and researching. And I've been in a little bit of that kind of gathering stage, like gathering all of the information and preparing for the year ahead. But it's been a few weeks now. I feel like I'm finally getting back on track and I wanted to sit down today to start sharing some of these fun things with you. I did choose a word, a one little word for 2024. I've been choosing one little word for many, many years, probably more than 10, possibly 12. And this year, my word is ease and it's been really, really good for me so far. It's a grounding word that I think about often and I try to use and implement in my life in some way. And it's been perfect for me this year because I feel like last year had a lot of change and um, maybe growth. I don't know if that's the right word for it. There was a lot of change happening in all aspects of my life last year. And this year, I really want to focus on easing into what works for me, what doesn't, um, easing into new projects, new interests without jumping in too quickly because I tend to do that. I get overexcited, overstimulated. Ease has been the perfect word for me to just be a little slower, a little bit um, kind with myself and just get back on track with where I want to be. I've got so many exciting things in the works this year. I've got a show that I'm going to be a part of later this spring. I've got new products I want to design and just so many crafty projects I want to work on. It's a really exciting year and the word ease is just the perfect one for me to start adding things into my life without overdoing it. So I really, really love it. I am making a commitment to myself and to you, I guess, that I'm really hoping to film a video for YouTube once a month. It was a huge challenge for me to do that last year, but now that I'm back on track with making again and knitting a little bit more often, I'm really going to make it a priority to sit down once a month and film a video for YouTube. In the meantime, if you are looking for me anywhere else, you can find me at a whole bunch of different links down below. I am on Instagram. I'm on Ravelry. I'm on Goodreads. I've got my shop website listed below. And I'm also on Patreon where I film videos weekly, just everyday life kind of videos. And yeah, I've got a lot of stuff to share with you today. So I'm just going to jump right in. I don't really remember what I've shared 
because Vlogmas is a bit of a blur. So I might be repeating myself, but I thought it would be a great starting point to sit down in January and share my projects. And then hopefully it will motivate me to kind of keep focused on a few projects at once and I can kind of track my progress throughout the year. So this is kind of like my visual diary, I guess, but I may have shared some of this progress already. I don't know. So I do have a finished object and I feel like I have shared this, but I don't really care because I love it so much and it deserves another moment. I have a finished pair of socks that I'm absolutely in love with. These are my DK weight vanilla shorty socks. The yarn is stunning. It's legacy fiber arts. The colorway is after dinner mints. I'm obsessed with this color because it has just enough color for me, for them to be interesting and pretty, but it's not so distracting or crazy that it wouldn't coordinate with most of my outfits. I could put these on with almost anything that I'm wearing, which is 90% of the time denim. And I love them. They're so perfect. And I don't really wear my fingering weight socks very much. I don't have a huge collection, but I do have a small collection of finished socks in my closet and I don't grab them. And I'm not sure what it is, but the DK weight socks are different. I have worn these a couple of times and I think it is the squish factor. They're not super bulky, but they definitely have like a plumper, squishier feel. They're a little bit more comfortable for me. I love them. The pattern that I used for these is the DK Weight Vanilla Socks from Kay Litton, who's the crazy sock lady who I adore. And I just did like a shorty version. Love them. It's a free pattern. And I don't think I've updated this on my Ravelry page or project page, but I'm planning on doing that soon. I have a little bit of updating to do over there. I do want to keep track of my projects there. Um, and I know I've started some, but every once in a while, I just need to go in and update all of those pages. So I think I'm going to take some nice photos of these and then I'll update my project page on Ravelry. But these make me very, very happy. I love them. My next knitting project is a half finished object and it is my Advent socks from The Cozy Knitter. This is the 2023 Advent sock and I'm in love with this too. It's so beautiful. The colors make me so happy. I finished this one um, earlier in January it's usually how I do my Advent socks. I tend to finish one quite quickly, not by Christmas day because it gets so busy, but the week or so after Christmas, I worked on this, I finished it up. I just used an undyed skein of yarn for the heel flap and the toe. And I really enjoyed knitting a stripe a day on these socks throughout December. And then I just caught up at the end and I just think they're so beautiful. My Advent socks are pretty much the only socks that I knit on circular needles. I think just because I like to do two at a time. Any other time I'm knitting socks, I'm usually using DPNs, but I really love this sock. And I've got the second one sitting in this beautiful bowl that I got um, at the beginning of the year from a shop on Etsy. I will put the name of it on the screen because I can't remember it right now, but it's really beautiful. It's got bumblebees on it. And I just have this bowl sitting on my desk so that whenever I am working on the computer, I can pull out my sock and continue knitting. So the second sock is ready for a heel flap, which is why it hasn't made any progress. It's kind of where I stall in my sock knitting. It's not the most exciting part for me, but I've got it sitting right here, 
ready to be worked on. So these are just a vanilla sock. I use the How I Make My Socks vanilla sock from Susan B. Anderson. And it's the Cozy Knitter Advent skein of yarn. I love them. So those are my two socks, one finished, one half. I do have some whips I wanna share. One of them I've also really stalled on and I will tell you why. So it's in one of my small project bags. It's very close to being done and I absolutely love the hat. It is the Stockholm hat by Petite Knits. I've done quite a bit of it. Here it is. It's beautiful. I've tried it on and I love it. I love everything about it, the fit, the yarn. It's beautiful. What I'm not loving about it are the decreases on the crown. I've been following the pattern. I am just about ready to move from my circular needles onto DPNs because it's getting smaller. And I think it has a beautiful decreasing um, design. Let's see if I can get a picture of it for you here. There's a photo. I really love the look of this hat and the decreases. However, I must be doing something slightly wrong because on one side I am getting some big gaps. And if I'm not pulling on it, you can't really see them, but they're kind of bothering me. I'm also not loving the process of knitting these. I don't know why. I think just regular decreases are quicker for me, but I don't know. It's been slowing me down. I know I need to just finish them because I am so close, but we've also had really mild weather. We've had a couple of weeks of freezing cold temperatures, but it hasn't felt like winter to me around here. And so I haven't really pushed on my hat knitting because earlier in December, I was super excited to knit all of the hats. I even ordered some new needles, which I'll share in a minute. I had a whole bunch of yarn set aside to make a few hats this year, but I haven't worn a hat once and this one is just slowing me down. It is beautiful though and I'm obsessed with this colorway. Purple is my favorite color and this kind of mauve I don't even know what you call it, but it's stunning. It's Chelsea Lux. The color is Sugar Plum. Put that upside down. There we go. And I'm holding it together with, I believe this is Sugar Plum as well. So I really, really love it. I know I will finish it. I've got my DPNs in the bag, ready to go. I just need to force myself to do it. Unfortunately, a couple of my other projects are distracting me. So whenever I've been knitting, I've been pretty much working on mostly just one project but there are two that have been pulling my attention. But before I share those two, I did wanna share one other hat that I had started, I can't remember, earlier in the, the winter, maybe November? I'm not too sure. It's in this bunny bag. And I put it aside because I remembered my Stockholm hat. And I've been really trying to finish projects this last few months as I've gotten back into the swing of knitting more regularly. I got rid of a whole bunch of projects that I didn't want to finish. I gave some away. I ripped some out and I prematurely cast on another hat and I decided to go ahead and finish or try to finish my Stockholm hat first, but this one is also calling to me. It is one of my favorite hats that I've ever knit and it's the second one, because this is the first one I ever did many years ago. This is the On the Sea Train hat. It was a free pattern from Espace Tricot. You can find it on Ravelry. I've got the project page for this one on Ravelry. 
I'm obsessed with this hat. It's to me, it's just the easiest hat to wear. It's the perfect go-to hat for me, and I love it so much. And quite a while ago, I purchased two more color combinations to make these hats from the Knitting Loft. And I started one of them. Let's see if I can pull it out. So here it is. Feels a little twisted up. There we go. So, This is what I started. And I really wanna continue this one, but I'm not allowing myself to work on it until the Stockholm hat is done. The yarn that I'm using for it is absolutely beautiful. It is Woolfolk Far. The color, I cannot remember the color. I think this is it color 35 and then the mohair or the surrey i think this is surrey alpaca yeah baby surrey this is is that ching fiber i think and this color is lemonade i think they're beautiful i love like the peachiness of it it's perfect i think it looks so good in my rose gold bunny bag. And I really enjoy this pattern. It's it's just a really nice knit. It's one of my favorite hats in my collection. And so I knew it would be the perfect one to work on, which is why I have this one. And I also have a turquoise yarn combination in my stash, ready to go whenever I want to make another hat. So those are my hat whips. The two knitting projects that have been taking all of my attention, one of them is in my Cardinal Red bunny bag and this is my Sophie scarf. I shared this throughout Vlogmas. Lots and lots of people have made this. I'm sure you've seen it. I love it. It's so beautiful, it's so simple, but I think it's a really nice piece for your wardrobe. So I have just passed the, um, the middle or the center where I've been increasing this whole time and now I am finally on the decreases. So hopefully it will go a little bit faster. This is a really nice therapeutic knit, super easy. And the yarn that I'm using is so luxurious. It just makes the project for me. It is Clinton Hill Cashmere Bespoke DK. And I don't know the name of this color. I've had it in my stash for a while. I cannot remember if this is Camel or Cognac. It's one of them, but it's beautiful. And it's going to go with absolutely everything I love it. So that is a really nice, easy knit. I'm excited to finish that one, but I keep putting it aside because there is one project that kind of has my heart. And right now it's fitting in my regular um, bunny bag in the color brown. And it is my number 10 shawl by Versace Knits. You guys, I'm in love with this project. Like absolutely in love with this project. It makes me so happy. It's a little bit hard to share because my needle cord is really curly and not showing it, but here it is. I just recently had to put it on a larger needle. And I'm obsessed with it, you guys. It makes me so happy. I've been enjoying this so very much. I am going to have to deal with this. I'm not a fan of finishing 
at all. I have a couple of projects still sitting over there on my little knitting trolley that I haven't been able to wear because I haven't finished them. I haven't woven in the ends. Um, and so this is going to be a big project with a lot of ends. I need to knit some as I go because as you can see, there are a lot. So this is a really beautiful 10 color shawl with intarsia knitting. I did find a video online of how to hold your yarns so that you get a really nice crisp line with no holes. I didn't quite do it right at the beginning, but I think when I weave in the ends, I can kind of fix those little gaps. But for the most part, this is going really well. And I'm in love with my colors. I love the yarn. I'm just, everything about this is amazing. So it's the number 10 shawl by Versace Knits. I am using yarns from Pearl Soho, Linen Quill. I don't have all of the color names to list off right now, but I am going to create a project page for this. So if you are interested, you can find all the details over there. So I just keep the two colors that I'm working on at the moment in this bag with my shawl. Everything else I've got loaded up in one of my large tote bags. This is just my project bag that I carry around with me or I leave it in my room and then whenever I need the next two colors, these will be the next two colors, um, I will swap them out and continue to use the bunny bag. So it's all linen quill, which is 50% fine Highland wool, 35% alpaca, 15% linen. And I shared this during Vlogmas, but when I wound up all of the cakes, I just put a little bit of the yarn onto the ball band and I labeled them for how I was doing them according to the pattern. It's been really helpful so far. So I just have two more rows to do on this color combination. It's beautiful like peach and coral. And then I will be putting in the green and the cream. And then I will go back to this blue with a vibrant pink. And then I will go back and start all over again with the colors and it will grow and grow. And I just love it so very much. I'm loving the process of it. The actual knitting of this is a lot of fun. Changing colors is fun. Um, and the prospect of wearing this and having this beautiful, colorful shawl has me very, very excited. So that is currently my favorite, favorite project. It stays in my room, in my bedroom. I've got a chair set up with the tote bag and all of the yarns. And then if I want to take it down to watch a show and work on, I will just grab this and take it with me. So that is pretty much all of my knitting. I might gather some dream knitting projects for you and turn the camera around and share those a little bit later. I did want to share a couple of new things that I got in the last month or so that I'm really excited about. In December, when I was thinking about knitting all of the hats, I really loved how it felt to knit with these needles. These needles are from Indian Lake Artisans. I really, really love them. They have, I think a hexagon shape so that your fingers sit very comfortably on them. And I didn't realize it at the time, but I was enjoying knitting on these so very much. I think I posted a photo on Instagram and someone from Indian Lake Artisans made a comment and said that it was probably comfortable knitting them because they have a swivel needle. I didn't even know that they had that, but once that was pointed out to me, I totally noticed that when I was knitting, I didn't get that same kind of, not pain, but there's a, like, a little bit of a pull when you're constantly knitting in the round and it adds a little bit of strain to my wrist and to this part of my hand. 
So I got super excited about that and I went ahead and ordered two more pairs of circular needles for myself for all of this hat knitting that I want to do. I decided to order um, needles for chunky knit hats because I have a couple of skeins that I really want to knit a chunky weight hat with. Um, so it's a 5.5 millimeter, I believe. And then I also ordered a 3.25 millimeter so that I could knit another sock head hat. I've got some yarn in my stash that I've been wanting to make another one of those hats with. So those were two purchases that I was really excited about, um, even though I haven't cast on any more hats lately. I'm really happy to have these in my collection because I love wood needles. The shape of them is super comfortable to knit with and that swivel, like I don't even know where it's swiveling from. I think it's from here, yeah. It's from the cord to here, like it actually swivels. So you're not getting that tension when you're knitting in the round. I love them. So two new pairs of needles to add to my collection. And after all of the chat in December during Vlogmas about the rigid heddle loom, I did go ahead and purchase one for myself. It took a few weeks to pull it out of the box and build it. It is tucked away for the moment so that I can focus on work. But I'm really excited to dive into that. The whole concept of weaving fascinates me and I'm really excited about it. So when I ordered my Rigid Heda Loom, I got the Ashford Rigid Heda Loom 36 inch. I'll put the link down below to where I ordered it from. I also ordered this book along with it. It's called Rigid Heddle Weaving Basics and Beyond from Deborah Jarko. I know I can find lots of information online. There are free video tutorials. There are paid for classes I can take. But for me, there is nothing like a book to reference. I just really like having a hard copy of something. Um, and this is a really nice book. It's got beautiful pictures. It's got all of the basics in here. Few projects. I just really wanted to have a reference book to go along with it so that if I'm sitting in my room or on the couch or with my coffee at the kitchen table and I want to do a little bit of research and um, learn about it before I sit down and work on it. This is what I'm going to be using. So those are the two things that I got in the last few weeks. I'm really excited about them. Other than that, I have just been doing a ton of reading, like a ton. I almost don't even recognize myself. I've been doing it since last January. I read a book last year. It kind of sparked something in me and I have not stopped reading ever since. I think it all started with this book that my friend Courtney gave me. We did a little swap for Christmas and she included this book, The Lost Flowers of Alice Hart by Holly Ringland. I thought it was a beautiful book. I loved the cover. I loved the story. I think they've made a movie or a TV show out of it as well. It was such a nice gift and I really enjoyed it. And it just got me back into reading. And I don't really remember a time when I've read so many books, but I've been enjoying it. I'm on Goodreads now. I've done reading challenges. I far exceeded my reading challenge for last year and I just love reading so much now. I ended up getting a new Kindle because my last Kindle was I think over 11 or 12 years old and it was crashing and driving me crazy. And as much as I love a beautiful book, like a hardcover or hard copy of a book, I find I read a lot more on my Kindle. So I went ahead and upgraded my Kindle this year. I've been loving it. This case 
I'm also loving. I will put the link to the shop that I got this from on Etsy down below. I don't remember the name of it as well. I ordered two from her shop. Look at them. They're so beautiful. The only thing it's missing is one of those little handles here, but I've been really enjoying my Kindle. It's probably what I've spent the most free time on in this past year and this past month is no different. I actually have two books that I wanna do a little mini review on because I was really lucky enough to get an advanced copy of them and I've gone ahead and finished them and put my reviews on Goodreads. I'll leave the links to them down below. And I'm not gonna lie, both of the books that I've gotten these advanced copies of and read were both five star reads for me. I absolutely loved them. The first one, I wrote them down. The first one is called Savor It. It's a book by Tara DeWitt. And I was already a huge fan of Tara DeWitt's books. Um, she's a really, really great author. And this new book that I believe is coming out in a few weeks, or maybe in like, maybe at the end of January, it was so good. I absolutely loved it. It had everything that I love in a book. It had small town. It had a whole bunch of cute farm animals. It had um, a chef, so beautiful descriptions of food. It had a farmer's market. It had all of the wonderful side characters in a small town, protective brothers, and um, it was just really, really heartwarming and lovely. I loved it. Such a good read. I would highly recommend it. Um, the main characters were some of my favorite characters. Um, I really, really liked the female main character, Sage. She was strong and vulnerable and just wonderful. Like really kind of a little bit eccentric. It was a beautiful town in um, Oregon. I really enjoyed this book. So if you are looking for something to read, I'm pretty sure it will be out very soon. It's called Savor It by Tara DeWitt. You can read my review for it down below or read the description about it, but I would highly recommend it. The second book that I was able to get an advanced copy of and review was Off the Beaten Path by Madison Wright. This one was so super sweet. It was very funny. I was laughing out loud at some of it. The main characters were so good. The female main character was one of my all-time favorites for sure. She was just really strong and funny and independent. And she was a risk taker and she cared for people. She did so much in her small town. I love books that take place in a small town. I just get that whole Gilmore Girls feel to it. There was a little girl in this book who had my heart. Her friendship bracelet making and cute hair and braids and just so many little details that made this book delightful. I would highly recommend both of them. And just because I got advanced copies does not mean I'm obligated to talk about them. I wasn't obligated to review them, um, but I really enjoyed them. They were both probably two of my favorite books I've read in a really long time. And so I wanted to share them here. I've already shared my reviews on Goodreads, but I wanted to share here as well because they were just that good. And if I didn't love them, I just wouldn't talk about them. I can highly recommend them. For the rest of the month, I think I'm just going to reread a couple of favorites. At the moment, I am rereading this whole series from Lucy Score. I read them last year. They were favorites of mine. The first one is Things We Never Got Over, I believe. Is that right? I can't remember which is the first. Yeah, this is the first one. So I am rereading this one. Next up, I will reread the second one, which is Things We Hide from the Light. And then I can't remember the name of the third one. Third one? 
came out just a few months ago and I loved it so much. I will be reading that one again as well. Again, small town, cute side characters, lots of laughs, romance. I just really enjoy these kinds of light reads. They're a lot of fun. I love the kid in this series. She's, I think, mostly in the first one. Waverly, is that her name? Whaley, Whaley. Anyways, love those books. So that is what I've been doing in most of my spare time. A little bit of knitting, a lot of reading, a lot of planning for this year. I am really gearing up for a whole bunch of new stuff in the shop. So maybe I'll do a little bit of a shop update right now. At the moment, I am working on aprons. I am really excited. I finally got a new source for some of the hardware, like the little gold hardware that goes on the strap of my denim aprons with the leather strap. So those are in the works. I am just working on finishing up a big batch of those, which will be in the shop, hopefully in the next one to two weeks. We'll see how that goes. I will put updates about that on Instagram. I am no longer doing newsletters. I wanted to mention that in December during Vlogmas and I totally forgot about it. I have let go of that whole newsletter thing. It was really costly. I didn't like doing them. I didn't find it very user-friendly to actually set them up. And I know a lot of people don't like getting them in their inbox. And so I've given that up. If you are looking for updates for my shop or just random things here and there that I'm sharing, you can check out my Patreon. You do not have to subscribe for the Patreon membership to have access to posts that I do about the shop. So something new I'm trying is when I'm posting a little like a blog post about say my word of the year or uh, a shop update or a new product, I'm going to be putting that on Patreon but leaving it open and accessible to everyone. So there are videos that will be um, for subscribers there. It's a paid for subscription, but I'm also putting things up on Patreon that you can access if you just wanna keep on top of what I'm doing um, in the shop, what's coming up, dates and things like that. And I'm also continuing to post that on Instagram. So hopefully you can get those updates there. Uh, but I really wasn't enjoying the newsletter thing and the prices went up and I was hardly using it. I was forgetting to do the newsletters. So I just decided to let go of that so I could focus on doing more YouTube videos um, and just doing other things. So aprons are coming. I am working on some new products for this coming year for the shop. I've got couple of fun things I'm going to be hopefully adding for a show that I'm doing in May. I am going to be a vendor at Knit City Toronto in May. It will be, I believe, the long weekend in May. So it's like the 17th and 18th, I think. I'll share a lot more information about that in the coming months because we do have some time. But I've got my thinking cap on. I've been planning a few new things to introduce at the show and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. At the moment, I do have leather tote bags, the everything leather tote bag like this one here. I've got a few of them ready to ship in the shop. Usually I do those as a pre-order but I did get a couple of them to add to the shop every once in a while. I like to just throw a few in there for people that don't want to wait or um, just to have available. So at the moment, I've got one in brown. So there's one of those. I've got a couple in this beautiful cardinal red. I've got a couple in mustard, 
which is always a favorite of mine. And I'm so tempted to keep one of these for myself. I've fallen in love with this color of leather this year. I've got a few in blueberry. I just think it's gorgeous. It's the perfect tote bag. It fits so much stuff. And I'm kind of excited to have a few of those in the shop for anyone that wants one shipped out right away. I've also got just a couple of blueberry and cardinal red um, carry-all bags. So a little bit of leather in the shop. I've added some bunny bags. I've replenished a few missing colors of things. So the leather is well stocked at the moment and I'm really excited about working on some new things for the shop this year. So that is my knitting and shop update. I'm going to clean up a bit of this mess. I do have a few other things to share. I've got a couple of favorite things. I've got, I think my favorite cookbook from, I wouldn't say all of last year, but it's kind of a new book, but it's so good. I know it's going to be a favorite. I wanna share that one with you. And I think a little later, I will pull out some of my dream knitting for sweater making this year and share that with you as well. I've had sweater knitting on my mind for quite a while now. I've been accumulating some beautiful sweater quantities of yarn that have been sitting in my stash. And I really wanted to pull out some of my favorite ones this January to just remind myself of what I have and what my dream knitting goals are for the year. And I'm pretty sure I will not be knitting five sweaters this year, but I really wanted to pull out my favorites and get started on some of them. So the first one I've actually already cast on. I cast this on sometime early last year, maybe even at the end of the year before. But because I didn't really knit this year, sweaters were the last thing on my mind. Whenever I was knitting this past year, it would usually just be um, like a cowl or a shawl or some socks to try and keep me going. Sweaters are sort of the last thing that I knit if I'm not in a knitting mood. But things have changed and I really want to work on this chunky Dahlia sweater. I think it's gorgeous. I love that it's in a chunky weight yarn, so I don't think it's going to be a project that takes a ton of time. And I'm absolutely in love with the yarn. It's this beautiful kind of camely color. Here's the yarn that I'm using. It's Sennis Garn Kos. I think the color is 2543. It's kind of like a camel. And then I have this beautiful Rowan Kid Silk Haze. It's kind of like a mushroom color. I think it's 00686. Not too sure, but it's knitting up beautifully. I think it's such a pretty pattern. It's called the Chunky Dahlia by Lynette. And I'm definitely going to be starting with this one since it's already on the needles. I've done the um, the fold over neck rib already and I've joined it so I'm ready to go on that one. The second one I also have put in a project bag because I was very close to casting this on at one point and I really want this in my wardrobe. It is so gorgeous. It is the Putney sweater by the very talented and beautiful Amy Loudon from Taylor S Studios. Look at that sweater. It's so simple and beautiful, I need to have it. And I have the most stunning yarn to make it in. This is Dandelion and Dogwood, Merino DK, and the color is Rosewood. It's just the most sophisticated, kind of dirty rose. I love it. And I really want to have this one at some point needs to be in my wardrobe. I just think it's the most classic silhouette. You guys may remember if you watched Vlogmas, I purchased a kit from Unit. 
yarn shop in Toronto because I saw this cardigan with a kit on their website and I couldn't resist. It is absolutely beautiful. It's called the Amapola Cardigan by Claudia Q. And again, it's just a really classic but pretty silhouette. It's got um, like a balloon sleeve, which I love. I'll have to find buttons for this one. It's just a really classic cardigan and I loved the yarn that it was knit in. So I chose the same colors as the sample. It is the Drops Air. Let's see what the color is. Color 34. And it will be held together with this Sandness Garn Tin Silk Mohair. And this one is in Putter Rosa, 3511. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. So that is in my dream knitting pile. And I've also got these two. I've had these on my mind for a really long time. I got yarn for this one at um, Cake Palooza this year. I'm so excited. So this is the Cozy Cardi by Shayna Billow for Chelsea Yarns. I just think it's going to be super cute with everything, with jeans, with cargos, a little t-shirt, and I'm obsessed with this colorway. So it's Chelsea Lux Cozy DK, which has this beautiful texture to it, and this is the color Berry Crush. And I will be holding it together with this Chelsea Lux Mohair in Fairy Berry. <gasps> Look at it. Oh my gosh. I am a purple girl through and through. Purple and green, or variations of green, are really my favorite colors. And these other ones over here are like my favorites for almost neutrals. They're just like classic neutrals. I think they'll be timeless in my wardrobe but these two are really just my favorite colors this other one is the stay cozy which is another pattern by shana billow for chelsea yarns so perfect it's a comfy slouchy v-neck pullover in a chunky weight and i am thinking i will be knitting it with Chelsea Lux Cozy DK in Copilot, along with the Copilot mohair. So beautiful. I love them. So I have a lot of potential here. This is my dream knitting for sweaters for 2024. I'm definitely starting here. I have no idea which one I will do next. I feel like it's going to be one of these next. I feel like this one might be a little later and who knows, maybe one of these will become my Rhinebeck sweater for the fall. Who knows? And I'll start one in the, in the summer at some point. So that is my dream knitting. It is peak dry skin season for me and I wanted to share a couple of my favorite things that have been helping me combat dryness. I've always loved a good facial spray. I have one from Thayer's that I love like a rose facial spray. I've got a little mini one from Fresh. I just love them but recently I've discovered this Mario Badescu one. I've got a couple of them. One is in my purse. One is in the car. I've got this one on my little makeup table and a couple of times throughout the day if I'm feeling dry I will just grab one of these and spray my entire face. It is so soothing. This one is the aloe herbs and rose one but they're all good. I got a little mini set in December and I like them all. I just really like to spritz and you can spritz under or over makeup, doesn't matter, and it's so refreshing. 
I know I've shared this in the past, but I've been using it a lot lately. It is the All Natural Shea Butter from Eugenie, or Eugenia. It is this chunky little tin, and I just smear this stuff on my lips, on any dry patches, on my hands if I need it. I really love it. It is such a good product. You can really use it anywhere. You can put it on your elbows if you want. It's just a really simple moisturizing balm and I love it. And another thing that needs a lot of attention for me right now are my cuticles. They are so dry. And this is my favorite cuticle oil. I've tried so many different ones. This is the cuticle oil from Ella and Mila. It's a lavender scented one and it's my favorite. I usually put this on before I go to bed, but I also recently have been using it throughout the day as well. It's just really, really nice on my cuticles. It's been helping. And I wanted to share because these are like my top three products at the moment for dry skin. I have one last thing to share with you. I am going to try to keep it brief because I think this video is approaching one hour, but I wanted to share my current favorite cookbook. It just came out after Christmas and I've only had it for a few weeks, but I already know it's going to be a huge favorite. It's called Dinner Tonight from Alex Snodgrass. She is the author and cook behind A Defined Dish. And I've seen this book pop up on TikTok videos and on Instagram, and I was so intrigued, especially because I love all of her other cookbooks, but I've been really trying to streamline my meal planning and dinner making for the family. I'm still craving new recipes and lots of flavor. I love trying new things, but I'm trying to keep it simple at the same time, and this book is perfect. It's got a lot of new ideas for me and I really love it so far. I'm not going to flip through every single thing, but I just wanted to give a really brief flip through so you can see what it looks like. There are sheet pan dinners, um, delicious dinner salads, soups, a few pasta dishes I want to try. There are a lot of chicken dinner recipes in here which are intriguing me and I'm really excited to try a lot of them we've tried a couple things so far everything has been amazing and I just really love how she puts a cookbook together her kitchen is beautiful she's wonderful photography I've put a lot of sticky notes in here, as you can see, because there are so many things I wanna try. She's got slow cooker recipes. So many good things. Baked chicken and orzo bake. So this one is definitely a new favorite. I have a couple of cookbooks that I've kind of kept out on the sideboard in my dining room, and this is one of them because it's just one I don't want to forget about. I think there are a lot of good ideas for dinner in here, and I just wanted to share it with you. So I think that's it. I'm going to wrap it up before this gets really, really long. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you again next month.